Have you been reading about Creosome Mod? Well, today we're gonna to put it through its paces with some extensive testing on three printers. If there's one thing that's really being discussed heavily in Creality community groups at the moment, it's Cree Awesome Mod. It's an add-on for Cura 4 that aims to greatly improve print quality. I was already interested, but when my patrons asked the question, it was a done deal. Now, when I was Googling it, I came across this great video from the first layer, which I'm aiming to build upon by offering much more testing. Firstly, I'm testing it on three printers instead of one. We have the Creality Ender 3 Pro, the Creality CR10S Pro, as well as an Ender 5. Secondly, their range of modification varies as well, which will give us some interesting results. My CR10S Pro has some fixes, but nothing dramatic. My Ender 5 is halfway to being an enclosed machine, but there is nothing to affect the slicer besides adding a BL touch. Now the Ender 3 is a development machine that has a bunch of upgrades, but the only things that will really affect the slicer are the BL Touch as well as the direct drive extruder. The other thing that's gonna work for me with this video is that I rarely use Cura. Therefore, I think I can provide a realistic before and after set of test results. First, we need to lay down a baseline, so let's have a look at what I've done. First things first, Cree Awesome Mod is compatible with Cura only. Cura, of course, being the slicer that we use to turn our STL files into G-code for our 3D printers. So your first step is going to be to download Cura and the link is in the description. Now that Cura is installed, I'm adding my printers ready for this test. So I'm going to put in the CR10S profile because there's not one for the CR10S Pro. And then I'm going to come back and put in my Creality Ender 3 profile of which there is one ready to go. I need to make one change however, and that's reducing my retraction from 5 to 1 because I have a direct drive extruder instead of the Bowden tube setup. There's no Ender 5 profile, so instead I add a second Ender 3 profile, and then I simply edit it to match the Ender 5. So that means making the Z height higher, the width and depth a little bit smaller, tweaking the wording in the start and end G code, and adding a G29 for ABL for my auto bed leveling, and I did that for my Ender 3 profile as well. Our slice is set up, so let's look at what we're printing. We're going to use the 20mm calibration cube, which is also used by Creosome Mod in their documentation but we're also including this mini all-in-one 3D printer test because it's got a range of features to show us how the profile works. For something a little bit more real world, we're gonna print this low poly toter dial. And in case you didn't know it, in Cura to get to vase mode, we type in spiral and tick spiralize outer contour. As you can see, that's all of the work we need to do to have vase mode activated. And the model that we've chosen to print for vase mode is this honeycomb vase parametric design from Radis. I printed out one of each of these on each of the three printers, and here are the results. I'll keep the order and colors the same for each of these, but in each case we have black, the Ender 5 on the left, blue for the Ender 3 in the center, and purple for the CR10S Pro on the right. Those cubes all look pretty reasonable, as do the all-in-one mini printer test. We can see we have some minor stringing, but apart from that, all of the features for all three printers have been formed quite nicely, no major defects. This pattern continues when we look at the low poly toter dials, they're well formed, there's just a tiny bit of stringing on the back of the Ender 3 one, but apart from that, no major concerns. All three vases also look good, what we have is a really nice high quality baseline. We now have a nice range of baseline prints, so it's time to install Creosome Mod and then print out the same prints again to make some back-to-back -back comparisons. So here is the GitHub for Cree Awesome mod, and it's got really detailed documentation. Let's have a quick skim through it. We can see here that the overall aim of this is to increase the print quality. And as we scroll down, we can see there's a lot of before and after pictures for the CR10S Pro and the Ender 3. It goes through the actual modifications, and they are related to the machine definition within Cura, as well as actual changes within the slicing profile. If you're still after more details, you can see that there's some changes to the interface as well. And then we get to our installation section. Be warned that you can't update from Cura 4.0 to 4.1 if you have this installed. You need to return it to standard, do the upgrade, and then reapply this. And to download and install this, we don't start by clicking the clone button up the top of this page. 
Instead, we have to click on the link here, depending on which version of Cura we have. At the moment, I'm running Cura 4, so that's the link I'm going to click. While that downloads, we'll see that there's some further instructions for installation, and this video is going to cover them according to this guide. On the left, we have our zip file that we've downloaded from GitHub, and on the right, we have our directory for Cura 4.0. And on a PC installation, that's going to be C, Program Files, Ultimaker, Cura 4.0. Now we can see the one on the left is called Resources, and we're going to replace the one on the right. But at first, if we want to make this reversible, we need to make this a backup version. So I'm just going to add underscore backup to the end. Now all I simply need to do is to drag this one out of the zip into the Cura folder. Now that that's finished, we should be able to open cura.exe and see what the changes are. We can see that the splash screen has already changed. And now it's time to add in our printers. So let's come up to settings, printer, manage printers. All of the ones I had set up previously are still here. So we're going to add some new ones. We have a new category called Creosum Mod. I'm going to start with Ender 3. And once again, I'm going to add in my G29 for my ABL. Let's repeat for the other two printers. Now the stock Cura didn't have a CR10S Pro profile. I was only using the CR10S. So it will be interesting to see what differences come from this. One little thing that I quite like and shows the attention to detail put into this is the 3D model you'll now see around the printer bed for the CR10S Pro as well as the Ender 3. Unfortunately, the Ender 5 doesn't have this, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Using the base profiles on 0.2mm layer height with only the G29 and Ender 3 shorter retraction in place, I reprinted all three files. Here are our side-by-side -side comparisons starting with the Ender 5. I can't really see a great deal of difference on the coloration cube for the Ender 5 on the X, Y, flat side or even on the top. For the Ender 3, it's a little bit different. I think the surface is a little bit cleaner, perhaps a little bit less ghosting and there's less artifacts from left to right across each of these faces, apart from Z which looks the same. For the CR10S Pro, it's definitely cleaner. Around the letter is much smoother in general on the X and Y sides. Z once again is exactly the same. For the mini test, the new one peeled up and dislodged from the bed. Apart from that, they look pretty identical, except there's definitely more stringing on the right. This same pattern repeats on the Ender 3. The exterior of both objects look exactly the same, but when we turn them around, we can see there is some fine stringing that's not really present on the standard model. Particularly if you cast your eyes to the shape in the upper right of the screen, there's lots of wispy little hairs not really present on the left. For the CR10S Pro, the outsides once again look the same. The overhang test for each of them looks the same. And on all of the small features, I'm not really seeing any particular difference. They both look fairly good. Ender 5 Toter Dial, and I can't really see any distinguishable difference here. They both look pretty much identical. For the Ender 3, that tiny bit of stringing on the tail is now gone, but I can't see really any difference in surface imperfections from the left to the right. The CR10S Pro keeps the trend for this model. They pretty much look the same from left to right. No appreciable difference in stringing, surface artifacts, surface quality, anything like that. Vars Mode, Ender 5, and I'm not really seeing any difference between the left and the right here. They're both good prints, and when we flip them up and inspect the single wall strength, we can see that they're both equally strong. It doesn't feel like either will break. For the Ender 3, I'd say the surface finish seems to be about the same. And once again, once we flip them up, no difference in strength between the two. The CR10S Pro, however, I think has a noticeable improvement in surface quality on the right hand side, which is the Creosum mod version. No difference in strength either. So where does all of this leave us? I'd argue the black parts on the Ender 5 look pretty much identical across the board. The Ender 3 had worse stringing on small intense retractions and at times some very small improvements in surface quality. The CR10S Pro was the winner here. I think we didn't really lose anything but we definitely gained surface quality almost on every print. So all of this so far was at 0.2mm layer height because that's the layer height I use for all of my general printing. 
I thought it would be fair, however, since this is a quality mod, to do a tiny bit more testing looking at the high quality profiles. For this test, I'm using the best inbuilt profiles. That means fine 0.1 millimeter layer height on the standard Cura and super quality 0.12 millimeter magic number layer height for Creosome mod. Once again, I printed out the two back to back, same filament, same conditions. Consistent with our other CR10S Pro results, there's definitely less ghosting on these flat surfaces. The same applies to the Y axis side, it's just much cleaner. On top of the printer, everything looks exactly the same as before. And one general comment I'll make is compared to the 0.2mm layer height versions, I don't think these look a great deal better, which is why I never print any lower than this. Now I've presented all of my results for you so you can make an informed decision on whether you'd like to try this or not. And disappointingly, I've seen a little bit of hate in community groups and you have to remember that all of the profiles built into Cura come from the community and they're already quite good. That means it's going to be hard to make dramatic improvements simply from tweaking the slicing profiles. But you have to remember that the author of Curiosum Mod has done all of this for free. That includes putting in the time and effort to develop everything as well as writing up all the instructions and that means you should be appreciative no matter what. So what I need to read below in the comments is your results. If you tried this out, please post your results below. It should make for pretty interesting reading for me and the other viewers of this video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.